right so something a little bit different for you lot today and we've come to birch house fisheries for a little bit of a different one we're going to focus on skimmer fishing just commercial style skimmer fishing because there's definitely been a a change for me you know I mean? me and andy have both got to fish quite a lot of these style of matches through angling to silverfish competitions or whatever else and they're becoming a definite trend you know I mean from the from the old days of how you target um silverfish on natural venues to how you fish for silverfish on commercial venues it's completely different like really 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 different and it's been a tricky one for both me and andy coming from a, a long long time ago a natural background in the way you fish for, for skimmers roach whatever else bringing it to try and employ at these type of venues you often find that there's a lot of a lot of issues that are caused in the way that you feed and the, the way you do things and get away with it at other places that you simply don't get away with on commercials because of the amount of silt and if anything because the amount of fish that are present it's, it's a, almost an unnatural environment where there are literally in, in this case especially today there are a lot a lot a lot of fish present which makes it difficult to do things in certain ways so that, that's the the emphasis on how i want to what I want to go through today, if you like, and how uh, we feel the best ways of targeting these silverfish are, uh, best ways of targeting silverfish on commercials in, in this sort of generation, how it's gone to now, the, the days of feeding loads of ground bait, setting big dinner tables and fishing over it, for me, it's just inefficient. It's not, it's not the right way of doing things because of the problems that can be caused. So I want to th run through a few things today that, for me, that the, the biggest thing that's focusing on on these uh, silverfish venues is you're not, or very, very rarely, especially at this time of year when it's getting better, fishing for small weights. I mean, potentially here today, we could be talking 40, 50 pounder skimmers, which it's a hell of a lot of fish when you're looking at fish two, three, four to the pound. I mean, you're going to be catching a lot of fish very quickly all day. And because of that, I mean, you have to focus on things like being selective, making sure you're catching the right stamp fish just to put yourself ahead, never coming back with a fish and feeding in the correct way so you're, you're not missing bites, you're not getting line. You, you, everything's fast. I mean, you're putting a fish in the net as quickly but as smoothly as possible without any aggro out there or when you're landing the fish itself. So that, that's what I'm going to go through today. I'd say it's very much a, a pellet based the attack for me, which I mean, that's what you'd expect. But it's commercials, it's because commercials see that amount of pellet based bait, whether it's ground bait, micros, whatever else, that is what they eat. I mean, rocking up at places like this with Bloodworm and Joker, with Worms and Casters, whatever else, yes, they're going to catch loads and loads of fish, but you're not potentially going to catch the right fish, and they're going to be a bit, they can feed a little bit weird on them if they're not used to those type of baits going in. So there's always exceptions, but so a general commercial rule is that. I mean, fishing with different baits that they don't see a lot, they can be a bit dubious and just tricky to catch in it. So for me, pellets are the way to go. I mean, skimmers eat pellets. It's, it's what I want to feed. It makes them nice and easy catch for me. And you've got the versatility of either fishing them really, really negatively, if it could be a potentially tricky day, if it's really, really hard early in the year when it's cold, or as we're going to do today, it's a bait that you can really, really attack them with, but at the same time, control them and keep them where you want them. So I'm not going to touch on baits now. We're going to get Andy up here and we're going to have a chat about baits when and we're going to have a start. What I want to talk about quickly is the rigs that I want for this sort of thing and just a, a real quick overview. So it, it's not going to be a case of fishing multiple lines today. We're going to fish one line because I'm after such a big weight. Yeah, in a match, I might feed two lines just so I've got somewhere to rotate if it goes quiet or I have problems with carp or, or whatever else on one. But the, the main thing is efficiency on that one line and understanding what that big shoal of fish I'm going to have in that one area is doing and using the right rig at the right time to catch them fish as fast as possible and to catch the right stamp of fish. So what I've got, really, really simple, all three floats are the same. I've got three carbon stem slim floats on, the usual Tim Morsey ones that I use for pretty much everything. Because you find that when you're fishing really, really fast, a carbon stem just prevents from wrap overs, tangles. It, it's just, it's easier to do things with than a fiddly wire float, which you don't need when you're fishing for this amount of fish. So in all cases, just a 1.5 hollow bristled carbon stem um, with a 416, a 414s and a 412s on the, um, no it's on lies, 416s, 414s, 410s on the three different rigs. So, but first off is my really positive rig and the one that I'd expect to catch the bulk of me fish on. This is probably the, the no nonsense rig when they're on the bottom and I can clatter them. And it's just a 416s float with a big solid bulk of, um, what have I got, one, two, three, four, five, seven number uh, eight and two number 10 droppers. But my bulk's literally what? 10 inches away from me hook, there is no messing about. It's put me bulk in, put me float on top of it. Catch really, really, really quickly. There's no messing about. That's for when they're on the bottom and I'm not suffering with liners, things like that. I'm catching them smaller fish. Often early in the session, that's going to be the rig for, for really making the most damage. 
because of the way I'm going to feed, I also need an option of fishing through the water. So with that one, I've got exactly the same sort of rig, same float again, but a 414, and that one shot us with spread out tens in the bottom end. So that's going to sink, say, not a nice slow all the way through the water. That's going to be really slow because I'm fishing in six foot. This is going to get down fairly quick, but it's a nice little flutter in that bottom end that just catches them clever ones, maybe at the back of me feed. Just if they start coming off the bottom, this is how I can intercept them. Probably the most, the least likely, or the, the rig I'll use least during a session, but it does pick off them fish in that. In the dodgy times when they're watching everything, which silverfish can be a nightmare for, when they come off bottom and go a bit funny, so I swap into this rig and put a few fish in my net while I top things up, while I, while I attract a load more fish in the peg. This is gonna catch me some fish. And last of all, I'm doing well balancing these, I've got my lovely little four tens float, which is just with spread out number tens all the way through it again, but all the way through the rig. And this is my rig for fishing shallow. So it's, let's say there's a lot of fish here. So there's gonna be a lot of competition. And even when fishing pellets for silverfish, for skimmers in this case, there's a very, very big likelihood that at some point they're gonna come up and I'm really gonna be able to clatter the, the, the bigger fish probably. You often find that the big two and three pound skimmers, often at a place like this again, because it's a commercial, they behave so different to what they do in a natural venue. And instead of feeding on the back of your bait to be real clever, the big ones often sit above the fish and you can catch them shallow. And that's what the, this rig's going to be for, is just flicking in a nice expander, catching them on the drop and potentially catching a little runs of them really big fish throughout the session. But so hopefully what I'm going to do is show you the things I'm looking for to tell me when to swap with each rig. But for now, I think we get Andy over here and we have a little chat about what baits we're going to use for this lovely day's fishing. So Andrew. Dad, can I have a go? <laughs> like a little boy down here, Jay. <laughs> but it's commercial skimmers then. Yeah, so what I'm going on about is definitely how it's so different to natural venue skimmer fishing, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. It's, we've seen it at so Hallcroft was one that popped into my head. Yeah, so I was convinced when when, uh, when we got through, I'm like, right, that's it, maggots cast his waggler. I'm gonna smash it to bits, but so wasn't. Pellets it's just it. like ridiculous. The difference. Yeah. Because you can potentially target them them better fish and you can calm your peg down a lot more mm -hmm. can't you whereas with natural baits like your maggots your casters your worms and your ground bait yeah it's just it just can ruin it in one potentially yeah. you think that's because you've got to you've also got to feed a lot more bait to make things happen yeah it's nowhere near and as it, efficient and as quick on commercials no. definitely not pellets are the way to go yeah. isn't it even and some what, like natural waters going to pellets aren't they but yeah, yeah away from that but yeah definitely proper catch your fish that's what we're going to go through in it it's yeah, pellet right. fishing for that i don't want to emphasize on the the, the delicate um, like F1 style fishing, where you'd fish 10 micros and, do you know what I mean? That, that's definitely a way of catching them if it's rock bottom, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, for what I want this to be, is a positive way to really making something happen. The, the, do you know I mean? It's catching lots, big weight of um, yeah. silverfish that we e Even like the way you're gonna fish today, you can get away with it in the depths of winter for, for, for silvers. Even like, definitely skimmers, but even like roach and that, and hybrids, they'll yeah. all have it how you're gonna fish it, wouldn't they? Yeah, maybe with different baits. But yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, we're focusing on skimmers. So that's what we're gonna talk about, it is, Kicking off a peg and, and seeing how a peg changes through fishing pellets for silverfish. Mm. You know what I mean? That's the one, and that's what we, we've gone in with. I've already prepped the peg. So, what I'd do in a match, I'd have had a negative one to start on in the way that I've said 10 micros and see what's going on. But I'd feed this positive line that I've just fed. I've put a line in now already. Would, would you just start it off on the same swim negative, Jay, or would you like do no, that somewhere negative else. away from it? Somewhere else, just to see. So, you've right, got your, yeah. your negative option at 13 mm. meters and then your positive option at 13. The negative, literally in this case, it get bin within 10 minutes just seeing what's what in it yeah, yeah you just you catch one shot and you think right that's not the way to go which is the case and say yeah. and what i've fed on on the positive line is i've given Mate, some bait that's more bait than you've fed all it, last it's year loads and what's loads and loads of bait in it but i think for me pellet to the ground bait, ground bait substitute yeah 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 putting ground bait in for because you've got that much silt on the bottom as soon as you introduce ground bait, it makes a mess, doesn't it? And the skimmers, they just go horrible. They can go absolutely... And what, what usually happens with, with MJ is, um, with ground bait, certainly the bigger skimmers, they'll, they'll hang slightly off the bottom. They sort of like dive into the silt, then hang sort of off the bottom, and they're an absolute nightmare to yeah, catch. lots of foul Gilfie lots of bubbles and all oh, that. it's horrendous. It? It says it's not what we want. No. So for me, using a, a small amount of micros yeah. as my ground substitute, but all that is, is that's not going to be to hold them in my peg. Yeah. So I put that amount, sprinkle over a nice decent area, probably over a three foot square. Mm. I mean, gives you a lovely like area, but they're picking up individual bits That's what and it, not. It, it, I, yeah, can't stress that enough though. It's something for them to eat. Whereas ground bait, yeah, brilliant for drawing them in, but like, you just get too preoccupied on it, yes. can't they? makes them messy. And then when it comes to, to what you're gonna feed on the hook and what you're gonna be able to loose feed. So yes. Loose feeding's the one. Yeah, and man. this is a, the bestest bait in the world that I was shown years and years and years ago with some soft pellets. Mm but using softened four mil pellets 
for this skimmers. This is your baby, your secret boss and all that. It used that. years ago, yeah, it used to be mega, I've mega, never, mega I've never fished this way, never, never ever done that. I mean, I've like soaked them, drained it off straight away. I've never fished it like like what you're going to yeah, do Yeah, putting fours in. So that this just, it's something that's not done very often, is it? People yeah. softening big pellets, big four mills. But for skimmers, it gives you, it's the only way of loose feeding. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you could go down the maggot route, the caster route, whatever else, but say in today's case, if we were to go down the maggot and caster route, we're going to catch vermin on a lot smaller stamp, isn't it? Yeah. And because we're after such a big weight, I want to get rid of that small stamp. You're talking straight away, just job done, aren't you? Straight in, straight big in. fish. Yeah. I mean, the right fish that leads me, because to that 40, 50 pound, yeah. I'm not catching that initial five or six pound of tiny fish that wastes an hour of my time. It's straight into you. Yeah, I might catch that in three fish. fish. Yeah, man. It's catching prop fish and so soft four mil pellets, for whatever reason, they've got to be the right type of pellets as well. You don't want an oily pellet. Right. You okay. want the, the lower lower oil coarse pellets, whether it's cotton scrattons or whatever you get. Just a lower oil one. It just needs and now you're fair, you're completely soaking them, letting them drain in, just like you would your, your micros. No difference to your micros. Dunk them, cover them in water. I mean, I'm not looking to put them on the hook. It's just a softened just pellet. A feed, that yeah. The skimmers, like the skimmers, are very, very fussy when it comes to eating. Uh, hard pellets, I think you they get full very quick, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they like certain pellets, and they don't. Let, they want a pellet that breaks down fast in the stomach, so they can keep eating. You've always said scrittings, haven't you? For Generally skimmers. better, but yeah. they're uh, they're some spotted fin, coppensy type ones. It's, the, it's that low, it's the low, low oil, oil thing that, that's okay. the, the key thing. I mean, they like that fish mealy smell. That's what skimmers are fussy about. But they give me the option of loose feeding and really, really making something happen, which. Just get shallow rig on, isn't it? But like that, that's over the, the potential of it. That, that's a whole thing that it's about. Mate is that potentially with feeding a bait like that, I can catch fish shallow, I mean silverfish still, shallow one but pellet when you're and fishing selective. What, what bait are you going to put on the hook? You're just going to put Expander. an expander. So you're not going to band the little four mil? Or is that I've just had this it? conversation with Rich, I've never, I think it's too fiddly. I don't I mean, think I'd even selective. contemplate putting an expander on the blooming hook, Jay, because it just fall off after the strike. Well, that, that's why well, when he when he strikes, fish is on, isn't it? Don't <laughs> miss bites, does he? We well, keep it ready on. I mean, I've, I've used ready ah, done pellets okay, yeah, so that are a lot tougher, yeah, man. or pre do them myself with lots of gelatin and right. lots of glycerin, whatever, just to make a solid pellet. Yeah. The, the finesse scale of things that like when you're fishing for a few big skimmers or for F1s with pellets, you don't need it. it it's not, hasn't got to be as sexy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, We can have something a bit more, I like a bit that. more versatile that we can kick their bumps Always with. learning in this sport, folks, always learning. I can't wait for this, Jay. <laughs> I've generally, <laughs> I generally have not fished for skimmers this way. I've always, I've done it with micros, but not four mils and then come not shallow positive. on a four mil. Never, never. So if was. I was going to be shallow, it'd be like a maggot caster or a banded four mil, Jay. Yeah. So before we have a play, like I said, I've introduced that lump. We're not going to bother with the negative one. I've just fed me little carpets of bait out there 10, 15 minutes ago, haven't I? What, what's going to dictate when you start loose feeding, Jay? Um, just see how many fish are in the peg, if I need right. to attract them in, but we'll, we'll come on to all that when we do it. I'm going to start on that, the mega positive rig <laughs> yeah. that I said. Get yeah, my big bulk, two droppers, straight awesome. down. I've got a pre-done expander on. I've got some of my spots of in, softened four mils on, just so it stays on. The biggest thing I've got though is a big hook. Oh, yeah. got on, I want 14s. a 16 or a 14, no <gasps> messing yeah, about. It's a fine wire then, yeah? Great big nice, yeah. Fine in, that, in that case, I've got what, an MXC1. So it's a decent wire. It gives stuff. you confidence, doesn't it? You whack into it. Well, it, it lets me be fast pulling back. Yeah, and elastic wise, again, I'm not messing about. I've got something soft, but they'll yeah. get a job done. I've got our eight to ten slick, which you may seem... animal for skimmers. Well, it's proper. But I'm going to tell my dad over you, Jay. It's, it's well, your dad have your dad have next one up. To be fair, he'd be on a <laughs> young one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next one up, next twelve up. Yeah. Right, so, go ahead, go what ahead. I want to do is see what's there before I do anything. But very similar to that maggot video that we did at Western. Yeah. It's the same sort of principle. So I'm going to drop my bulk in, put my float right on top of it. I'm going to say, talk us through laying it in. There's quite a few different ways, and there's obviously the quicker ways and the slower ways. Yeah, I, like I want no dicking about. This thump. is straight in, straight under. Yeah, man. I mean, by putting my float on top of my bulk, it's the fastest that can sort of register. Oh, See, and that's oh, straight Jamie. under, lovely. Talk us through it. Yeah, but because I'm so... That was ridiculous. All my kit's so heavy and yeah. no dicking about me. Elastic soft enough to get them in. But that big hook just lets you straight back. Yeah, yeah it, there's it no... gives you confidence, doesn't it? Look at that. Of course it does. Weight builders, aren't they? So we could and have gone in with Bruce. like other baits and well, I'm not going to say get bite quicker. That was like well quick. That was just done on it. Ooh, fish. Oh, Andrew, he's going. What, what are you doing with him? He's going. Have you really, are you going to let another one? I've, I've got two. Top kit, top <laughs> kit. Uh, yeah, so potentially uh, smaller fish, but that, two of them, pound. Proper adder upper, isn't it? And see where they're up as well. Yeah, bang on. I'm seeing me bite straight away because all this is so heavy. You're seeing your bite instantly and you, you're straightening on them. You're not going to miss any, and you are definitely, definitely not going to pull out of any when they're up like that. Yeah. I mean, I could swing that around my head and he ain't coming off. I wouldn't do that though, but I could. 
Mate, I want to get him water and swing him into hand like, you know, <laughs> like they do in like Ireland like or Denmark, in Denmark back in the day. Doing. Uh, so, over depth, well, I didn't see how you plumbed it up. Where you plumbed I, I plumbed up the, the same as always, normal. middle of my body. Yeah, man. Yeah, because it's very, very odd. There's quite a bit of silt. So, which is why I've not fed me ground, mate, why I've just fed me pellet. So, I want that pellet to show up on me bristle as soon as it starts being over depth. If them skimmers change the bottom at all. Yeah. So Fucking what's the thing you're going to look for? You're going to look for fishing that, that bait out, Jay, and then potentially putting another pot in, or do you want to start loose feeding? What I, want, I, I don't want to feed by pots at all. It's too fast. Yeah, right. If I try and put little pots in, then yeah. it's, it's going to be feeding on top of my float. Yeah. Because of the depth there as well, because I've got six foot. Yeah. If I start sprinkling micros over the top of that, these are going to fly up in the Straight air. Straight off the bottom, aren't they? Whoa, some on it, mate. Get ready. Yeah, the last thing I want. I mean, I want them to... I want them to be on the bottom, easy to catch. I mean, they're not going to stay on the bottom, easy to catch, but it's where I want them. Yeah. You see, little fish, but it's nice and quick-ish. We're getting there. This is something different. This is the littlest fish you've had. It's not, not that little, skin, though, is it? Four, four of them's a pound, four or five of them's yeah, a pound. Yeah, still proper, but I'm not happy. Yeah, already I'm not happy. With, I, we're not catching fast enough. I'd be happy. So what I want to do is introduce some bait to try and a load of noise to bring some bigger fish in the peg, which is where my four mils are going to come in. So just before I go out, I'm going to give them a good pinch. I mean, there's no twos and threes, a good pinch of ten of them soft four mils just this New side of my bait. Animal. Look at that, there. that was weird, wasn't it? I don't know what that was. So that was just short of when I'm fishing. Yeah. Yeah, so it brings the noise, puts a bit of bait into my peg, but hopefully I'm still going to be fishing just on the back of it. And what I want to say is, I don't want to feed over the top of my float, same as with maggot fishing, whatever else. Yeah. Because I don't want them to, to cause me problems when the rig's in my peg. Yeah. So I need to decide whether I feed just before I go in, like I did then. Yeah. Or next time I might hook a fish, pull it round, then feed. Yeah, I like that. But that loose feed, it makes such a difference for these skimmers. So as long as I don't overcook it, so it's taking a bit longer to get a bite this cast. Yeah, as long as I don't overcook it and feed too much bait for the fish that are in my peg. It just it gives me versatility, doesn't it? Yeah, better one as well. That's a nice little one. Just a little bit bigger. Rapping. So I'm going to feed the same time again next cast. Yeah. And see what they do. And then the cast after that, I'm going to hook a fish and then feed. So we've had like just just over a pound in three fish, really quick. If you think about it, folks, if you were like you know putting your your rigging in top kit, coming back, putting a few micros in the pot, going out, tapping it in. You might still be on one fish, you know what I mean? That, that's the difference. Yeah. It's just straight in. You get your bites just it. as quick, but it's yeah. the fiddly process, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That mate. needs to go out I'd be of the window. keep that all the time as well. Which <laughs> filling your pot up. Yeah. So, I, I don't know about you, I never like fishing fast with a pot on. I hate it. Yeah, it's not I nice. don't think you can. No, you can't. Definitely not. I'm getting in some bait just for a go in. So, it feels like you're slowing yourself down. By feeding before you go in, you're not shipping out, but it's it makes the bite more efficient. Yeah. Well, yeah, because obviously if you're fed on your float, then, you know, it tells you that there's fish coming to your peg of the liners and that, but it is in one, it's liners, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? You're striking at all them. It, well, it, it, what it can do, it can make you change too quick. Yeah. So I could try shallow straight away as soon as I'm starting to feed because they're coming up. I'd rather have a lot of problems and then go shallow because yeah, then right. I know it'll work. So it's the odd little pinhead bubble and the odd little... We'll see that, just, having that pellet on as well, I missed a bite, having that pellet on, um, it makes me more efficient. Instead of a normal expander that I've done myself, yeah. that there's a chance of it coming off, I, I want to I think that's why on. it's always one on that, mate, isn't so it? Potentially, innit? Should we yeah, go in on boy. that? Yeah, oh, boy. Oh, over its back. So that's why weird. it's always sort of put me off, yeah. You know mm. what I mean? Them expanders are just, just falling off kind of thing. Certainly we like fishing shallow, but... Oh, durable and yeah, definitely. gets the job done. See how things are weird, this cast, though? Ooh. Yeah, nowhere near as fishing. So this feet. time I'm going to feed now. Yeah, pull him out so my pegs on your little. By the time one. you come back, unhook the fish, you're going straight back in. That bait's on the bottom. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, better luck. That's all on the deck and gone. So just the same as your maggots. Any time you lose feeding, in fact, it's about reading them bites, isn't it? So that's yeah. the tiniest fish. Lovely though, isn't it? But still quick, isn't it? For a silver fish, it is rapid session you're catching ever so quick in it we've probably got what two pound already yeah let's have a look at that so you're just looking at responses every time jay aren't you of course you what's what yes every like 
every way of feeding. See how someone's That's held some, it up? Someone's held down the job, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So the start that they're telling me they're coming up already. Yeah. You're getting problems like that, same as your maggot fishing, but you've got the rigs to cover it. Yeah. Put that in. If I have another issue this cast, then I'm going straight in shallow. Have we had one? You A don't get one as well. issues. You're Jamie Hughes, isn't it? You don't get issues. Mate. Oh. Oh, jumpy one. I had a jumpy one for ages. Give us a go, Jay. Give us a go, Dad. Can I have a go, please, Dad? So it's them better mate, ones again. Amazing. So these are still early in the session. You can't expect to catch the, the big, big boys. Uh, mate, it's surprising you're catching them too early. Yeah. These, these are the all right ones, aren't they, three, yeah? They're, what, two to a pound? Oh, yay. But with the, the big lads are still here. The pounders, the two pounders, the three pounders. But they'll come later and they'll come randomly with skimmers it's not like natural skimmers that feed on the back of your bait or how, how on the bottom have you had it? i mean we touched upon it before that the bigger fish you'll always catch them off the bottom as well yeah that's what i was going to exactly Isn't say it? that it's nuts mate yeah I mean, it's it's digging, it's like, like that deep folks i'm really shallow and you're like bream shallow what's going on but honestly it's because they've learned isn't it yeah because it's commercials they've learned they feed I, there I the safe. Feed. big fish i want to be straight into the feed like me, straight in the fridge. As as I had over the top of my that time, just to see, because I've been getting that many little indications. See, I had straight away mm. then. Yeah, but that stayed on the bottom, so that's nice. Jamie Hughes. Here's a go. Really nice. This bigger again. It's a proper lovely way, in it? But you couldn't replicate this with anything else. No. I mean, maggots have caused too many chance. problems. I say, if you've got in the ground, like most anglers do, go in the ground bait, two or three bowls, uh, fish it out, you just, you, you're not reading your bites, really it's are. all over the place. Don't get better than that, I can't oh. teach that. That's just like... No, nah, mate, no, nah, I'd be on my Discord. So you're getting time. a little bit bigger as well? Yeah, boy. Uh, yeah, no, with, with that ground bait, it draws fish in, but it's just a nightmare for like trying to keep them where you want them. They want to be off bottom and it's just, it's horrible. Yeah. Isn't it? You, you've knocked off the, because you've got such a volume of bait on the deck, you, you're inclined to want a fish in it and the yeah. fish will always be down there. But you can't like pick the, the stamp that you want out often, no. can you? It's nowhere near as efficient as this. Is no, it also not nice. on a commercial, is it? I'm not going to feed again. I'm just going to get my catty ready so he's got 10 in. I'm literally going to walk it, whiz me fall round. So I'm just starting to get the odd little yeah, indication on my float. You got a big doof on it, Rich? Yeah, boy, he's on it. Oh, Did you just miss hand. another one then? Missed another one. So there's an odd one coming up. But unlike like the maggot fishing video we did at Weston. Mm. That one, you can come shallow and they often stay shallow and that's it. This is a completely different ball game, isn't it? This could be well, no shallow catch heavier, two. Heavier bait as well, isn't it? It's, you know what I mean? It's yeah, and just different fish. With it being skimmers, it behaves so different, not me. I think for me with this as well though, that there can be big, t oh, massive amounts of time for me that I'm guilty of trying to catch two bigger fish with these skimmers. The weight builders, yeah, they, they add up so fast. What's you going don't on with realize, that one? You think you've got like 15 pounds, you end up weighing like 25, 30. Oh, they're, they're they ridiculous, so aren't much, they? But they don't have stink, that. folks. Yeah, you got smelly Make nets sure on the way out. Make sure you got stink bag for you, keep nets. Yeah, no, they're, they're real good weight builders. So I'm going to have one more go. And then for demonstrative purposes, like I say, oh, yeah. I'll, You're I'll, do it? I wouldn't put so a shallow rig on it, yet. What would you go into? Would you go straight shallow now? Would you start getting a few sand? Would you go through the water? Yeah, definitely. It's... It, with maggot and hide and roach and all that sort of thing, I think you need to work through your rigs. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this one, it can be often a case of one rig just doesn't really work. Me, me falling through the water rig eh, when I'm fishing like this, it's so when there's very few fish in me peg. Right, okay. And it's just to make them see it and... I mean, just you, like get you them extra bonus fish that you wouldn't catch being positive. Just in, mean, the, yeah. in the hard, when your peg's gone a bit quiet, it catches you a few. Yeah, yeah. Because it happens, you know, even when you're catching 40, 50 pounds. There's, there's... Does it happen to you, Jay? Yeah. <laughs> there's periods when it goes a bit rubbish, isn't it? No, and is. that rig's the one then, because you, you can lay it around, you bait more, you're not as positive, not as aggressive with it. Yeah. It's just got the chance of catching them, the clever, careful ones. So this has gone fed over the top of my float then, yeah. and nothing's happened, just them little, little hopefully the doofer little, will see it. Little wafters, just aren't they? Little. But because of my rig, none of them are bites. Yeah. Yeah, this is mega positive, get job done, so I'll see a proper bite when I get one. So I'm going to feed over the top of my float again. See what happens, see how quickly I get a little. So you can almost count them down and, you know, that determines where you go straight in shallow. Yeah, not far off, see that? Like, I don't know where. <laughs> oh, I don't mean they were on the bottom, but the noise has made something happen. 
It's not fair he always gets to catch the silver's fault. <laughs> See, see how the, the kit, instead of dropping to like your single sixes and and light, there's no it's need for it because you're catching so many. And the size of your hook, Jay. Yeah. You can get away with your kind of fishing yeah. a little bit heavier. Uh, Big up, we can be angry with them. Oh. So these can be, the, skimmers like that are the worst for being able to hook off the knotney. You can and do in it. In today's case, we're doing it when I've got gel. <gasps> I'm going to go quite, quite deep, I'm going to go in. So it's a nice versatile one, I can move it, same as last time. It's yeah. not a rig that I'm stuck to a That's little a beauty, lash on. Isn't it? Them, them floats and that shot in with having them back shots on. You can have a real big long um, length of line pulled up to float, but you're keeping in touch with it all the yeah. time. Yeah, skimmers keep hold of it as well, don't they? You, you don't miss. So what, what have you got on? Just one of them durable ex, ex, expanders? Yeah, yeah, same yeah. expander. They big up. Three done expanders, so they stay on full of full of glycerin. So could you potentially put them ones that you're loose feeding? Put them on your hook as well? Soon, yeah. Yeah, they're a bit heavier then though, and they, they rip off a little bit easier. You right. soften pellets, so you're best off using a, an expander oh, on the up. Get off that box. So that was like shallow than what you That was weird, that one. I'm not even classing that as a bite. That was just a little not, roach on the way in. So different species. Who says roach don't eat pellets, you lovely lot? They <laughs> love them. Let's have another look. When I come back here, I'm not bringing casters and maggots. Pellet head now, folks, you know what I mean? Change, jump me. So w when would you come to feed him before you go out, Jay? Like a few and then. With, with a shallow rig, never. Yeah, that's only when you're trying to control them on the bottom, innit? With the shallow rig, I'd much rather have my bait in between or among my pellets. With this, yeah. Yeah, I'll cut my bait down a little bit to half as many. So lay that in, and it's so nice. When you find where the skims are feeding... Oh, mate. It, it's the bites are a joke, aren't they? They're like, unmissable. Yeah, and this is when you normally get the jumpers on, innit? Yeah. <laughs> this is the big black ones that... Don't forget what to say. Finding them is important on this. It's, yeah. It's not like F1 fishing when you're shallow that you see as many indications. So it's hard to be the exact depth for them when they do come up. So you have got to, I mean, come back in, put it yeah. a foot up, put it six inches, whatever. Would you experiment Almost, with lifting and dropping, Joe? You're just going to leave it at that not depth? Not really, do you know what I mean? I'll lay it in, it's done. To say that they're not, it's not like no. F1's and I that suck your bait in and spit it. When you find them, they eat it and they swim off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not great, I don't think there's any shallow yet. I mean, I want an instant Apart response. From roach. Apart from some roach. Yeah, I want an instant response, or they're not there. Yeah, I can so just be. So, it's telling you, they're not, it's nowhere near as quick as what there are on the bottom. No. Would I mean, you I'd, potentially now go foot deeper, Jay, or would you go straight back on I'd go on bottom. Way? Go back on bottom, yeah. Yeah, I'd go back on bottom. I mean, that was just a quick try, more for yeah. demonstrative, demonstrative purposes. Demonstrative. Demonstrative. It literally purposes. hasn't moved, does it? We've not had a single. Nope. No, no, no. Little. But say so later, you, this line's so important because although you may catch the least amount of fish on it, it, it could be your biggest amount of weight, couldn't it? This could be oh, your this two, two ridiculous. pounders. Oh, this I've had it so many times where, you know, you're fishing on the bottom, yeah, you're catching loads of fish. Uh, you just don't think there's any bigger fish there. Then you come like that deep and that's where all the big bream and hybrids and roaches, it's ridiculous. Even yeah. crew is intention all that, isn't it? Yes. Everything. So, almost contradicting what I've said, this could be the one, <gasps> yeah, something's there then, won't it? This could be the one area that I do put something different on my hook. I may put a maggot on or something. When I mean, I don't want any maggots on the bottom because they're no. going to catch little fish. Shallow, sometimes a maggot can just be a bit nicer, but I still wouldn't feed them. No, it's just that noise See, that on the way in then, a little. Always on summer, wouldn't it, that? Maybe they're up a little bit more. So I'm going to feed right over the top of my float when it's settled now, just to see if I get a, an indication. Did that go a little bit then, or...? So this this just demonstrates, see, folks, this, see how that important again, it is to obviously stay with your catching where you could have another three, four fish on the bottom. Yeah, but definitely. obviously, again, we're demonstrating it for you. They're That's why you them. never want to come off until the fish sort of like tell you that it's ready. No. You know, more signs on the float on the bottom, isn't it? It is, definitely. Yeah, I'm going to go that. shallower, though, just before I come off it. It's gonna I'm going to take shallow. a foot off. Just because it's moving, things were happening then. Carrots. Big dirty angry carp. You haven't it? Big ten pounder. I hope not, because that's what I'm supposed to be catching, Jamie. <laughs> You'd catch one. See that? Oh, oh was it? mate! Big you as well. It's me not paying attention. Just missed a bite. <laughs> 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 yes, Jay. We have it. You got the same that? size hook on that as well. 16, yeah, same yeah. big gaff on. Yeah, but there's just no need for little, is there? Nope. As you said, they come in, see it, nail it, have it. 
I, I just think you lose those when you're trying to fish fast with yeah. little hooks. Things happen, don't they? And you pull out of all the sexy big ones. Oh, mate, it's a nightmare. So when a big gaff sticks in the gob and it ain't coming out, right, this is going under. You ready? Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Go on, Jay. Go on, Jay. No. So I might have missed the scout. One more quick go. 30 seconds, this is getting less than that, and then I'm back on the bottom. But by feeding with them bigger pellets as well, Jay, you can control the fish a lot better, can't you? Definitely. It's all going to get eaten, whereas if you're constantly feeding micros, you're just going to get a build-up and a build-up, and there's there's not a worse bait in the world than getting too preoccupied, oh, is Oh, mate, it? It, it can be an utter... It's all right well, in the I'm winter when it's rock bottom, in it, and you're yeah, just feeding yeah. 10 and 10 and 10. And you know they're all getting eaten, but not, not when you've got to put a bit in. No, last drop. See, I'm slapping it over. That's not for the noise, that's just to keep me rigged straight. Very tight. I want it nice and tight, don't I? Very tight. See, if there were any fish, I just think there were one or two roach shallow. Do you know what's proper bothering me, Jay? Go on. Your arrows aren't lined up on your pole. <laughs> Honestly, folks, it really, I've got such OCD about Have that. Have you? I don't oh. think I've ever done that in my life. You, mate, I remember you changing them all once. Either you or Rich, it proper did me. What, changing you, yours? I nearly took <laughs> on the pair of you. Like, one of you's done it. Yeah. Go on, get back on bottom, Jay. Back on bottom. See, a silly mistake like that. Yeah. That's, That's just it. cost me a pound, hasn't it? Yeah. Crazy. Like I said, that, that was demonstrative, even I wasn't that daft. I shouldn't have been doing that so I early. I would have been full. I'd have been straight on shallow. Straight on shallow. <laughs> I've had a line on coming shallow. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it is such a, a interesting way of skimmer fishing, Jay. Some, I've never done these, you know, bigger pellets. No. It's commercials, isn't it? They have changed yeah. it to... 100%. To being able to loose feed. Ooh, look at that. Look at so that, that straight in. away. That, I, t I tell you what, do you reckon that was on Dwop? I don't know, might be worth trying my other rig. I mean, just, just following it from on the deck, bottom lower third fork. or something. Yeah, that might be more efficient. Oh mate, mate, come on. Just stay on bottom, isn't it? Yeah, just stay on bottom. It's overrated, isn't it, shall I? It's not off, fell that. off, has it? It's overrated, shallow fishing, Jay. Do you not like it? No. Change, man. <laughs> right, back in. So it's still on positive rig, and I'm going to give this one more go on this rig, and I'm going to try out Fally through the water rig because so they're what, definitely intercepting bait, aren't they? Yes. What's that one? The 414s? Just 414, yeah, float yes. small. It, the, the size of float, it's not like for F1 fishing or with maggot fishing where you've got to have that slow fall all the way through. No. It's the bottom end that's important because I'm not trying to catch them shallow. I've got a shallow rig for that. Yeah. Yeah, this is just a is fluttery it, down the bottom end. Yeah, it's, it's not where as. Where they are, not that lost, what, a couple of foot on it? It seems to be, doesn't it? But a lot of that will be because of the way I'm feeding as well, because I'm pinging it over the top of my float. Yeah. Like I say, I'm just trying to show the, how they behave when you're feeding in different ways more than anything. So say, you know, obviously there's a few fish there now, Jay. Say, you know, you, you've been loose feeding the four mills and it suddenly just went quiet. You had five or ten minutes and nothing. Would you then go back to introducing a few micros? Yeah, I'd, I'd probably put... Because that does draw them in, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Give them a bit of a pot of one. Jamie, I don't think there's any need for it today, though. Boy. No, we're all right. <laughs> yeah, boy. So it, it is unlikely you, you're going to have to ever introduce oh, a carpet. Mate, that's still feeding on your bait, that it one. Still goes. This is a bigger one. <laughs> well, how nice is that? Oh, gee. So I can be guilty of that. I don't know about you. I can shit back too fast, mate. I think with skimmers, you've got to be sensible, haven't you? Yes. We can't whiz back. No. You, you can be fast, but you sensibly be, fast. You know when you can be fast? It's amazing for When you're right. shipping back, you're getting them skimmers sort of like giving the edge shake and all of a sudden it'll just go flat yeah. and that's when you, have you ever had it especially on the feeder as well where you can just like wind in and just go like that all the way <laughs> to it's like amazing but yeah you can feel it on the pole as well yeah when these go sideways you've got to stop haven't you yes right quick go what's this so this is through the water this one. is me yep. falling through the water lovely rig that again it's not going to be the best rig it's not going to be the fast and furious rig but it might be efficient at the minute what i'm after is the, the rig that i'm not missing indications on the one that I just sit there, bite, back with a fish. But you've got to tie it in with the correct feed in as well. That's the tricky yeah. bit, isn't it, with this? Um, what have I gone on? I've got gearly rig on, so I'm going to flick it right out. I think potentially bigger fish, this one, so they could watch it, watching it down. You're feeling it? Yeah. Let's hold that tight that way, now it's down. Look at you. Yeah, I am. Let's see what this is doing. Lovely. Oh, how, mate, how much better me. was that? But you could see well that was as it was watching it. We said it'd be bigger fish as well, didn't we, Paul? We <laughs> knows what we is on about. We is professionals, isn't it? See, hey, that's awesome. It's nice. You, you know, it? you're getting kicked off that box in a second. Look at the size of this. This is proper. I told I say, you. It's unreal, it? You're swapping between rigs. That is ridiculous, man. And you find something completely different. Oh, he's not man. massive. He's a pound, isn't he? Oh, 
They're just watching it, aren't they? <laughs> yes, they commercially conditioned skimmers. They're chunky. They're fat boys, them as well. Oh, and do you know what I really need? So where's it hooked then, Jamie? I've got it. Top lip, is it? So it was only just in. Must have had a good suction <laughs> on that one. Mate, that's, that's often what you find though, isn't it? Joking apart and then light you through the water. You just like suck yeah. it in. They have more time, don't oh, they, before mate. they show up on the on the float. Get a slammer on every one of them. <laughs> yeah, proper jump to score, you know. Yeah, boy. Oh, I love that, Jay. I'm that. still sticking with sticking with feeding on top of my float now. Yeah. Because I've got a rig that they're intercepting bait with, so it's all right. Yeah. I keep putting it in like I've got me heavy rig on. Keep forgetting. Jamie. But it's completely different, more positive and everything, wasn't it? Just because of that. Wasn't it? Add hold of it. Dump. Yeah. But what'll happen with this rig? I've got to keep this rig quite active. Yeah. Act yeah. I like that. Quite an active rig. If it's sat there now like it is now. Yeah. Yes, I might get bites on it. But you but might as well just go back on that. Yes. I may be more efficient. The, the bites on this rig have to be coming. I mean, as it's on the way in, in that bottom foot, foot and a half. It's better laying it tight and holding it tight. That was horrendous, but it'll be alright. That's like me feeding that, Jay. Right. <laughs> Where it goes, nobody knows. Is it for that. <laughs> Nothing going on. It's definitely starting to show a pattern, isn't it, of which yeah. rig's best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with this rig and the shallow rig, you often find that on you, oh, oh, the rigs yeah. that aren't going to be as good, you often find that you catch a couple of fish instantly on them, and then it goes a bit rubbish. You're after that rig that has the steady, yeah. is consistently putting fish in the net. Yeah. And it's crazy that over the same line, I mean, the three different rigs can have such a big... I know. I thought that was going to be game on when you had that one now. I'm definitely guilty of staying on the rig too long as well, especially yeah. having some, a bigger fish straight away on it. Mm -hmm. But again, that positive one, that'd be getting job done, wouldn't it? We know yeah, that's the bit. steady one, isn't it? And with these skimmers, for me, that's what it's about. It's Yes, you do have to focus on the size you're catching. You don't want the vermin. That's what the bait's all about, catching oh, the right ones. Oh, Jamie! Yeah. Is that another big one? <laughs> but you also need to be constantly putting fish in the net. You don't want the erratic spells. No. You want the fish, 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 fish. Not fast and furious and chaos, just constant. That's a film, isn't it? Fast and furious. Yeah. Love it, Jay. Are we liking it? Yeah, Mum. So, with that done, Andrew, that's about it, isn't it? It's, I think so, uh, yeah. It's obviously just worth mentioning. Obviously, as I say, if they, if they do go, you've got the micros there to draw fish in. You, you know they're going to eat them. Uh, but ultimately, you know, what Jay's been through, that's how you want to be targeting them. You know what I mean? So three rigs to cover all that water. And who'd have thought he'd be catching skimmers shallow, but it is ridiculous. I can't stress it enough how them bream and bigger skimmers will come shallow. Mm. It's nuts. I say single lines for me are the other big thing. So you wouldn't have like 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock in this Never, second, ever, ever in the planet. You hate that, don't you? Yeah. I, I'm I, all want, for that. I love it. It's all right when you want £10, that's, that's all right, but when you want £40, £50, I mean, the only other line I'd have is a short line. Yes. Yeah, and that one's just to drop on when this one isn't working. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's how it needs to be. Of course, with that done, I'm going to catch some skin bobs. Well, I don't think I am, actually. I think no, you're going to... No, I'm getting straight on the skin bobs, thank you, Jamie. Evict me very quickly. Have mm. it. It's lovely, Andrew. It is amazing, mate. I love it. Just such busy, nice fishing. Time flies by and all, doesn't it, when you're catching like it's that? It's a lovely day. All skimmy bobs catching in one Catching skin row. bobs, innit? Love it. We love you. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.